Hello and let's talk about India's hopes of developing a vaccine by August 15th. The Indian Council of Medical Research has now clarified saying that they did not say that August 15th was a deadline. In a sign of the great confusion prevalent in government circles, the Ministry of Science and Technology also released a clarification yesterday where it said that no vaccine was likely to be ready before 2021. Then, the ministry deleted the point about 2021. Clearly, there's a lot of back and forth going about in government circles on this issue and one can only hope that in this process, the proper procedure in developing a vaccine is not compromised. We'll be discussing this further, but first, here is a chronology. On July 2nd, ICMR Director Dr. Balram Bhargav wrote, to, wrote a letter to 12 institutions across the country asking them to begin human trials on a vaccine named Covaxin. The vaccine has been manufactured by the Hyderabad-based company Bharat Biotech. The letter said that it was envisaged that the vaccine should be ready for public use by August 15th this year and said that enrollment of subjects should begin no later than July 7th. It also said that non-compliance would be viewed very seriously and that this project was being monitored at the topmost level of the government. The ICMR subsequently backtracked on Saturday saying that the point of the letter was only to cut red tape and without bypassing the necessary procedures. Then came Sunday's clarification that August 15th was not a deadline. Meanwhile, according to the applications for trials filed by Bharat Biotech itself, the first two phases are expected to take a year and three months. This has left many puzzled what the ICMR director meant when he said public use by August 15th. The Indian Academy of Sciences has termed the deadline unfeasible. In a statement, it said, and I quote, any hasty solution that may compromise rigorous scientific processes and standards will likely have long-term adverse impacts of unforeseen magnitude on the citizens of the country. So what led to this confusion? What are the realistic timelines? And what is the politics behind this? News clicks Prabir Purkaista and Dr. Satyajit Rath discuss. Today, we're going to discuss the vaccine trials, some of which are now supposed to start in India as well. Of course, Serum Institute is one of the big players, generic vaccine players in the market. And they have also lined up with Oxford University trials that if it succeeds, then they will also produce the vaccines in India. Satyajit, a very peculiar clearance given by uh, ICMR, your friends in the Indian Council of Medical Research, who seem to have said the vaccine should be ready by 15th of August this year. Now, doesn't it seem absurd that the Indian Council of Medical Research should not know there are three phases of the trials and they are now asking the vaccine manufacturer who had said that they will run the trials, uh, phase one, phase two and phase three trials over 15 months. They should do it in the period of roughly six weeks. The first response that many people had to the letter from the director general ICMR that you're talking about, that was, that came, that emerged as a leak, I think, day before yesterday evening, was, is this some sort of a troll or a scam or a joke? Um, because, so I have had people asking me, do I really think that is his signature? And I asked you, did, I, did they make a mistake about the year in the letter? That no, somehow no, no. This person. Then one person asked that as well. <laughs> um, so, it is, it is that extraordinarily peculiar a letter. But in very brief terms, the letter is deeply problematic in two different ways. Firstly, the letter is written to the um, uh, private sector partner developer biotech industry, Bharat Biotech. And to a group of a dozen or so hospitals, um, let me not use the term medical institutions, since all of them, I suspect, cannot be dignified with that term. Um, a dozen or so hospitals who are supposed to be participating in the clinical trial of a SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 vaccine that ICMR and Bharat Biotech are developing together. So oh, ICMR is a partner in this. Uh -huh. Oh, that is even more strange. It, I, uh, you know, the, the number of 
weird things about that letter simply multiply the more carefully you look at the letter so um, i am still hoping to wake up and discover that it was some sort of a joke or a mistake and that it wasn't written by the dgicmr at all although i suspect that that's not going to turn out to be the case um can we demand to see his degree is that a legitimate demand the whoever assigned the letter <laughs> so um, but but uh, completely uh, frivolous responses although they are the most appropriate to aside um let me point out that there are two ways in which that letter is worrisome two different categories in which that letter is worrisome one category is this is a letter coming from a senior government um, official this is not simply the director general of the indian council of medical research um it is also a full secretary of the government of india in the ministry of uh, um, health and family welfare um, the secretary in charge of the department of health research um so this is then effectively a government letter and basically this is a government letter that is written to a number of parties some in the private sector completely a few in the public sector basically saying to them that they need to fast track and expedite a vaccine clinical trial which is in regulatory terms an extremely carefully hedged about undertaking it is hedged about by legal requirements it it is it is encompassed in regulatory stringency all of which is for good reason i mean normally fast tracking is something others might want but a regulatory body asking the people to fast track development of a vaccine is actually the reverse of what a regulatory body should be doing so keep in mind that uh, this is not the regulatory body technically speaking because the regulatory body is the uh, cdsc or, yes. or the drug control or general of india or or dgci people in that component of government Okay. um if if this had been the regulatory body then the conflicts would have been even more uh, problematic because as i said icmr is is a partner developer of the vaccine okay um nonetheless to say that um is what does the letter say uh, that that serious views will be taken of failure to expedite the process uh to introduce the matter by saying that uh, this matter is being followed at the topmost levels of government or words to that effect um all of this is classical bureaucracies to threaten people and just to give our viewers a reminder as of today morning india had over 697000 cases with over 19600 deaths our next segment is on the resumption of test cricket England and West Indies play the first match in a three test series on July 8th. This is the first international cricket action after the pandemic broke out and is being keenly watched and there are some unprecedented rules in place. News Click's Leslie Savior brings us the latest. Leslie, thank you so much for joining us. So, a very important couple of days that are coming up. Test cricket is finally resuming after quite a break after the COVID-19 disease. And uh, so at this point of time could you first talk uh, start by talking about the context in which this is starting because i understand that irrespective of whether people have people especially in india have a stake in it or not nonetheless it's very interesting when a sporting event of this nature and time is uh, beginning yeah it is very interesting because cricket is big in india and uh, bcci as we know has been reluctant to we start any form of cricket even training and they are citing safety concerns and all that there are other factors at play too 
but they have been proven right because our neighboring country Pakistan they opened up because they are again traveling to England for the series after this uh, West Indies England series and many of their players tested positive for coronavirus once they convened uh, before flying out so uh, in that regard with with the cricketing world uh, in shutdown and also going through a critical phase because their entire season can be completely washed out if if things don't start and that could mean a lot of uh, loss as far as revenue is concerned. So it was paramount that uh, boards such as uh, the English board or West Indies board, Pakistan board, I mean even for that matter BCCI as well but, but we are banking ourselves to do I mean, break even with, with the IPL this season. So, international cricket is not exactly our priority. But for the other boards, it's very important that these bilateral c- series happens. And uh, the example for England being, they would have, if, if, if this summer cricket doesn't happen in England, they would have lost to the tune of around, uh, the estimate is 300 million US dollars. And West Indies, again, struggling cricket board, and English board has given West Indies a $3 million uh, loan um, recently. And West Indies cricket board has been very clear that they are not traveling because of that loan or paying back I mean, as, uh, for that favor. But uh, it's, it's, it's clear that both sides, are, are for, for both the sides, this tour is very important. This match, I mean, the series to happen safely and uh, properly, it's very important. And on a larger scale it's very important for cricket as well and with with a with a world cup here uh, the t20 world cup is scheduled to happen in australia in november which the fate of which is not decided at maybe it might get scrapped because it's logistically a, a little bit of a nightmare because it's not a bilateral series right you have many teams coming traveling different matches happening in different venues so so that decision is yet to be made but it's a big year for cricket uh, internationally because it was a World Cup year and also many series happening uh, including these test series which are part of the larger World Test Championships. So points are at stake for the countries too as far as sheer cricket is concerned while the larger stake is of course money. Absolutely. And this is, uh, it's you mentioned this earlier while you we were talking that it's interesting that the format chosen was test considering that it's a five day uh, it's it's a five day match. It's not it's not a few overs like a T Twenty match or something. Yeah. So could you also talk a bit about exactly what conditions these games being played in? So uh, there are many changes uh, to start with. The technical committee had proposed a lot of changes in consultation with with the medical committee of the International Cricket Council. Protocols have been set. So the biggest change which we as cricket fans would notice is. Uh, Bowlers or fielders not applying saliva to shine one side of the ball, and their cricketers are used to do that to get the swing and uh, get get movement of the pitch and things like that. So that won't be that's barred, and the player the teams would be penalised if they are caught doing that. And uh, other than that, I mean, in the build up to this test matches, I mean the match starts on eighth. Uh, in the build-up, uh, the English team as well as the West Indies team played matches among each other. And yes. some, some of the images were, uh, came out on social media, on right. Twitter and all that. Right. So, celebration again, it's a different sort of... They are using elbow bumps instead of hugging or mm-hmm. shaking hands or things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is which would be a novel sight again if, if uh, for a fan watching it on exactly. TV. And... Uh, and uh, as far as game plan, game play is concerned, it's a five-day format. So there, there is a provision for substitute, a COVID-19 substitute, mm-hmm. which is a new addition to the rules of cricket, mm-hmm. uh, where if a player is uh, showing symptoms symptoms of uh, coronavirus infection, and uh, then he can be substituted, and he obviously has to be substituted and quarantined, and so a replacement player is uh, can be availed by the by the team involved. And that's a that's an addition, new addition to the rule. Besides that, uh, uh, the matches are being held in two. Di- there are three matches in this series, which are held in two different venues. Uh, two matches in Old Trafford, in Manchester, and one match in uh, the Edges Bowl in 
Southampton. And the teams are now in Southampton, the first match happening there. So these two venues were selected because there is hotel facility in the in the stadium. So the teams are not leaving the stadium at all. They are in this safety bubble, uh, which uh, which is sanitized to the point that players have been quoted by media and agencies that uh, they feel that they are living in a in a science fiction movie because uh, everything is demarcated the zones the players i mean it's it's all marked like lines are marked you are supposed to walk in through those lines only there are i mean uh, even in the uh, dining hall the players don't face each other it's like it's they're saying that some of them said that it feels like classroom because they are facing each other's back that way i mean uh, right. sitting one behind the other right. and with with the distance between them uh, so uh, these are all precautions these are all necessary for sure uh, for for things to happen safely and safety is paramount because if at all a, a miss i mean something slips up then this is going to drastically affect how cricket uh, restarts and accepts the normals that that are going to be implemented for sports action in the in the near future and that would mean cricket's existence itself in jeopardy so there is a lot of responsibility upon the organizers to ensure that things happen very smoothly while having said that it's not easy on the players either so players are used i mean so being uh, having covered uh, a couple of cricket series uh, abroad so when the touring party reaches the uh, country there is a lot of i mean it's not just about matches and the commitment on the field it's there's a lot of social and uh, pol- even political commitment that way because the embassies are involved they, a huge gala dinner is arranged for the visiting parties so all these are not there it's like the players reached uh, uh, the country they have been quarantined for 14 days uh, and then they have been shifted to the venue where they will play and they are not meeting anybody outside uh, they are not uh, stepping out just to catch some fresh air even 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 as simple as that right. so how uh, this would affect the players in the in the i mean long run because the players are not talking about it as such because they are just experiencing and living through it hmm. while at the same time uh, the psychological toll that it might take is 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 been discussed i i had a chance to discuss with one sports psychologist about it uh, last week and he was also Uh, I mean, pointing out that uh, the series, while it's good for cricket, it may not be good for the players uh, because uh, they are living a life which 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 they have not used to at all. And sports is a social activity that way. And without, uh, I mean, taking that social out of sport is 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 going to be very hard. And cricket has taken that kind of a. Uh, distancing protocols to another level i feel because in league football i mean football being contact sport and all that and players have had a much more proximity interaction there i'm sure uh, all these european clubs their dining halls were not set up like a classroom or a jail so uh, it's 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 tricky that way but i guess it's also important that this action needed to happen and as far as uh, again uh, in india it's 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 uh, these things would be viewed but it's also it also remains to be seen because our fans are not used to watching other teams play Absolutely. we watch cricket when we our india is playing or when ipl is happening so that way uh, as far as globe and cricket's biggest audience is in the sub- subcontinent no doubt so maybe the novelty factor might be there for the first match but after that beyond that how much of broadcast prps this this series would garner that's in question and secondly the intriguing part i am happy that it's uh, cricket is restarting with test because that's a format that i enjoy watching too it's 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 a purest form there's no frills there i mean it's it's pure bat and ball contest but at the same time i'm just intrigued why the boards went for this because it's not easy on the players physically either i discuss, i mentioned earlier about the mental aspect of right. of being in a lockdown kind of a situation while the physical aspect of playing 5 days of intense cricket test cricket i mean provided the match last 5 days uh, is is huge and players coming out of lockdown without much uh, training or action in the last 4 months it's it's i mean bodies might 
break down i mean unless it's 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 I mean, they have taken it in a systematic way in the past one still it's it's going to be tough on on the players and secondly test cricket audience has been waning in the last two decades right. so even the even the broadcast audience so uh, to restart the uh, sport when so much is at stake and uh, restarting it with a format that may not have uh, so many takers it's uh, it's uh, i mean they should have gone for a uh, it's a, it's a little intriguing i don't, yeah it's a bit of a gamble uh, probably because it's part of the test championship so they might have figured uh, that uh, it's important that hold it but i would have uh, i mean uh, gathered that it would have been a logical step to start with a t20 format or a uh, odi format t20 works best because it's easier on the players shorter format shorter strain and then you can use the same venue and conduct two matches three matches in the span of four five days and it would garner enough attention among the fans because it's it's intense closely fought action other than a test match it does and uh, t20 being the most heffest and uh, right right most sought after format it would have it would have worked better than test i feel but again like i said personally i feel i would have, i would enjoy watching the test match provided it's a, it's a even contest between these two sides but let's be honest west indies are not exactly what it was as a side long back and england great side were uh, one day world champions but on test they are, they perform like this in fact west indies beat them last time they visited england so right absolutely good thank you so much nasi for talking to us that's all we have time for today we'll be back tomorrow with major news developments from the country Until then keep watching news click